Rabat, Morocco's capital and the kingdom's third largest city, played host to the 2013 season opening event of the groundbreaking Middle East and North Africa Golf Tour. Relaxed, well kept, and very European, flag waving Rabat is just as cosmopolitan as Casablanca, but lacks the frantic pace of its economic big brother. Its hassle free charm is what draws tourism to the region. It was tea time for the third edition of the MENA Golf Tour as a high quality field assembled to take part in the inaugural Royal Golf de Asalam Open. After two successful seasons, the MENA Golf Tour expanded its 2013 schedule to include new events in Morocco and the Gulf States, providing even greater opportunities for players to enhance their careers. The tour has grown from four events in the inaugural 2011 season to 11 tournaments this year. Starting in March, the season's golfing odyssey was split into two stages. The first part saw the tour travel to Morocco for two events, with the remaining nine tournaments taking place in the UAE and neighbouring Gulf states between September and November. With the rich history behind golf in Morocco, it was about time the MENA tour paid a stop here. Morocco really is where golf started, I would say. You know, you've got the Hassan Trophy, so they have many players. This is probably the only country in the Arab world which has golf professionals. Uh, we all have amateurs, but as golf uh, professionals are concerned, Morocco is the only country. They've got great amateurs as well, and I think us coming here is just a matter of time. Stephen Dodd, the defending MENA Tour champion, was hoping for some early form. The three-time winner on the European Tour was attempting to replicate last year's success and become the first player to win back-to-back -back Order of Merit titles. It's a nice, uh, nice feeling at the moment. Um, not played particularly uh, a lot of golf over the last couple of months being back at home, but um, looking forward to competing again this week. 47-year-old Welshman had his work cut out though with the likes of Jake Shepherd, who took the Tour's Order of Merit title in the inaugural year and Zane Scotland, a former European Tour player and the only multiple winner on the Tour, also in attendance. Scotland, who finished runner-up on the Order of Merit in 2012, was desperate to go one better this time around. Well, the first year, I uh, unfortunately I won, won the first event and unfortunately broke a broke a bone in my foot which uh, stunted, stunted my performances a little bit. So that was down to injury. And then last year, to be honest with you, Stephen Dodd just played really well. I mean, I played, had a first and two seconds and I think one or two other top tens. And, just, you know, he still uh, beat me to that first place. So that's fair play to him. That's golf sometimes. But, um, yeah, hopefully I can go on better. Leading a strong Moroccan contingent of 28 players was their top professional, Faisal Sajini, who was relishing the chance of rubbing shoulders with a few big names in the field on home turf. Minotaur is growing uh, quite fast and uh, a lot of really, really good experienced players. I'm thinking Stephen Dodd or Ross McGowan or Zane Scotland or and many others. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for us to uh, compete against these players and see what they have to uh, teach us on, on experience and, and things like that. The top three professionals and the leading amateur from their respective orders of merit were set to receive special invitations to compete in the 2014 Omega Dubai Desert Classic, while the top amateur was to be rewarded with the prestigious Sheikh Maktoum Golf Foundation Scholarship. And the 15-player amateur field was appreciative of the opportunity provided to them by the MENA Golf Tour. 
it's it's good when you say too much amateur playing tournament because uh, in the other tournament uh, it's not too much playing too much players amateur. Uh, uh, it's it's nice. It's good. It's good for for the experience. With the top professional also set to earn a ticket to the 2014 Hassan Trophy, the tour's top four golfers were excited to try and get their year off to the perfect start. The venue for the Mina Tour season opener was the Royal Golf de Assalam's par 73 red course, which measured 6,702 metres from the championship tees. The Robert Trent Jones Senior design course was one of the toughest in Europe and is both long and strenuous. So we are quand même sur 450 hectares de forêt de Chelliège. C'est un site, vous avez pu le constater, un site merveilleux, magnifique et et euh, très jeune senior est venu euh, s'exprimer euh, de la meilleure manière sur ce, sur ce. Il a gravé les 45 trous sur cette magnifique forêt où donc euh, nous avons plusieurs essences, plusieurs euh, variétés, espèces forestières dominées par la forêt, par le, la forêt de Chêne-Liège. With wet and windy conditions to factor in, the agronomy team had a monumental task of preparing a championship course for the maiden Mina Golf Tour event on Moroccan soil. Alors euh, la préparation du tournement donc avec notre euh, greenkeeper, Monsieur Khmar Hewi, euh, euh, bon qui a organisé quand même 37 éditions de d'événements golfiques. Euh, c'est les préparatifs spécifiques euh, et habituels qui sont le sablage, euh, la fertilisation, l'aération. Euh, bon, on a eu des conditions climatiques qui ont fait qu'on a fait un traitement euh, particulier. Shelf like greens and water hazards come into play throughout this technical golf course which requires a hard thought out strategy in order to shoot low. Some holes are going to be really really tough and I uh... Uh, yesterday I was asked uh, what would be the winning score and I said something like 10 or 12 under but I, I doubt it now this morning seeing uh, what the weather looks like. A challenging course coupled with tricky weather conditions set up a tantalizing curtain raiser to a new season of the MENA Golf Tour. Cold and blustery conditions welcome players on the opening day of the tournament. Braving the harsh weather, Zane Scotland fired a superb 6 under 67 to take a healthy five shot lead going into the second round. Veteran golfer Stephen Dodd settled for a 1 under 72 to tie for second place alongside Kenya's Greg Snow, Morocco's Yunus El Hassani, and England's Dale Marmion. To be honest with you, I think anything around par is a good score. So to have a great day like I did today was even more satisfying. But it was really one of those it's one of those days where the course is like this, with it being windy, it's quite tight. If you shoot one under, you know, you you're pretty happy. So but yeah, I'll, I'll take six under every day. Morocco's Ahmed Marjan carded a level par 73 to lead in the amateur division, one shot clear of compatriot Mustafa El Maous. Among the other notables, Jake Shepard slumped to a 7 over 80, while Pakistan's Shafiq Massey could only manage a 10 over 83. Stephen Dodd carded a flawless 5 under 68 on day two to share the lead with Zane Scotland. The experienced Welshman, five back overnight, picked up five birdies without dropping a shot to join overnight leader Scotland, who could only follow his opening round of 67 with a level par 73. I didn't really approach any differently. Uh, the conditions were a little bit um, probably easier today, um, although it rained a bit more. Uh, the wind wasn't as strong, um, although it's picked up towards the end, but um, it wasn't as strong as yesterday, so that was uh, made it a little bit easier for us. Yunus El Hassani was snapping at the heels of the leaders, two shots adrift after a solid three under 70 to stay in contention for the title on four under, one shot clear of England's Ian Keenan. 
Ahmed Marjan fired a 71 to keep alive his hopes of posting a top five finish on the MENA Tour. An intriguing final round then lay ahead and we'll bring you all of the highlights from it after this short break. Welcome back. We were in Rabat, the historic Moroccan city, for the season opening event of the MENA Golf Tour, the Royal Golf de Assalam Open. Local favourite Faisal Sujini started the day eight shots off the pace and a bad tee shot at the first didn't help his cause. The resulting double bogey put him well out of contention. Overnight, joint leader Stephen Dodd had a disastrous start to the day. A double bogey at the third handed the early advantage to Zane Scotland. Scotland capitalised on Dodd's slip, sinking this long birdie at the third to move to seven under and open up a three-shot lead. Welchman Dodd was wilting under pressure, missing this par putt to fall to three under. Mina Golf Tour debutant Greg Snow was making a mini move. The Kenyan followed up a birdie at the fourth by chipping in at the fifth to move to two under. Yunus El Hassani was keeping the pressure firmly on his playing partner Zane Scotland. This sensational approach at the fifth set up an easy birdie to take him to five under. And Hassani followed that up with another tremendous approach at the sixth to surge within one stroke of Scotland. Leading amateur Ahmed Marjan started the day on two under, but poor putting at the seventh resulted in a double bogey to take him back to level par. A nervy approach from Scotland at the same hole moments later left a chip for par, which the 30-year-old couldn't hold. It meant he fell to six under, handing Yunus El Hassani the joint lead. However, Zane made amends on the next hole when his approach fortuitously hit the flag, setting up an easy opportunity for birdie, which he sunk to move back to seven under. So with 10 holes left, it was tight at the top with local pro Hassani still in with a big chance to topple Scotland. Stephen Dodd wasn't out of the mix either. Despite blunders at the third and fourth, he was only four shots off the pace, one clear of the English duo Ian Keenan and Dale Marmion. Here's Stephen Dodd at the signature par three ninth. Likes the look of this one. And that's a gorgeous tee shot, which will set up a birdie to take him to four under. 
to challenge tour player Ian Keenan, who dropped a shot at the third. This is third shot at the par five tenth. Left that one a little bit short, but it will give him a decent look at birdie. To the leader, Zane Scotland, or the Z-Man, as he likes to be called. This for birdie at the ninth. In it goes. And the six-foot Englishman moves to eight under. Back to Keenan for his birdie at the tenth. This is a very scorable hole. Downhill. It will turn slightly and in. He holds that one to move to three under. Now Manchester United fan Dale Marmion, who was second after the opening day. Pin is front right, but Dale's leaning left. And he's pulled that one pin high, a full 25 feet away. Back to big hitting Scotland, who will try and reach in two here. And he's set up a very real eagle opportunity there, which could all but win him this title. Super shot. So Marmion, a popular figure with the ladies on tour for birdie at the 11th. And this looks good and it drops so Marmion climbs to two under six shots off his close friend and the leader Zane Scotland so here is Scotland in that electric red polo for Eagle is it gonna turn oh not quite rims around but out very unlucky for Zane but he'll still walk off with a birdie Quite a few of the leading contenders on birdie blitzes at the moment. And here is Dale Marmion for back-to-back -back birdies at the 12th. And that's sensational. He holds a monster putt and moves to three under. Three-time European winner Stephen Dodd now. Not being at his best and having hit his tee shot into the trees. This is for par at the 11th. And that one whistles by, so Dodd falls to three under. To Greg Snow at the 13th. This 10-footer to get to three under. And the Kenyan confidently sinks it. Unfazed on his Minotaur debut, Snow is refusing to flake away. To the 11th and Yunus El Hassani, who briefly held the joint lead, but now needs to hold this to stay within two shots. Oh, and he can't. Not an easy hole, this, but Hassani will be bitterly disappointed with his putting there. Ian Keenan at the 13th. Not the best lie. Although this approach looks on line. And that's excellent. Only about five feet away. Scotland, again, having taken advantage of a scorable par five has an eagle opportunity, albeit downhill and very quick. It doesn't break from left to right, straight out of that putt. But he will tap in for birdie, and that will take him to 10 under. So back to Keenan at 13 to complete his birdie and move to four under. No problems there. And with that, the Englishman takes outright third place. So the battle for the runners-up spot is hotting up. Zane Scotland, though, is running away with this one. The Englishman on 10 under with a four shot lead over Yunus El Hassani with Ian Keenan, Stephen Dodd and Dale Marmion looking to try and finish in second place. So the leaders with six holes remaining and we'll bring you all the action after the break. Welcome back to Rabat for the final round of the 2013 Royal Golf de Assalam Open. Here is Ian Keenan at the 14th to mop up for his par though. And that won't turn. So a soul-destroying bogey and Keenan falls to three under. 
Three adrift of Yunus Al Hassani in second place. We're behind Keenan at the tee on the same hole. It's Zane Scotland. Hates that though. It's drifting left. And we'll nestle just in front of the bunker at this fiddly 14th. With a four shot cushion though, Zane shouldn't be too concerned. Now Emed Marjan, who was three over at the turn, but has been very impressive on the back nine. Birdied the 14th and almost drove onto the green here at the 15th. It's only his second shot. And that will set up another birdie opportunity. And if he sinks that one, he'll move to one under and remain on course to finish as the top amateur here in Morocco. So Scotland, from just in front of the sand. Got a pretty deft short game though. And look at that. It's in. Scotland not quite Luke Donald, but he's playing like him with a wedge in hand. Chips in for a birdie to open up a five-shot lead now. And surely this title is his. Greg Snow at the par 3 17th. Really needs this if he's to challenge for second place. But that is short. So he will have to settle for par. To the leader. And we can pretty much say champion as well at the 16th from the sand again. A very awkward stance though. One foot in, one foot out. And he's fluffed it. That dribbles out of the bunker, but only to the lip of the green. Keenan, a long birdie chance on this grainy green here at the 17th. Yeah. That one will stop short. So Yunus Al Hassani now looking very good indeed for second place. So Scotland, and this is for par. So the likelihood is we're going to see a rare blip. And that's a decent effort. But it's a foot short. And the Z-man will slump to 10 under. But he still holds a four shot lead. Keenan at the last. His third shot. On line but slightly short. Half a chance of birdie though. Yunus El Hassani at the tricky 17th hit a wild tee shot and now needs to try and get up and down. Fantastic recovery though. And he's five feet away from saving his par. Can Keenan then finish with a flourish? This for birdie. It will start left and break quite severely, more so than he anticipated. So he must now tap that in for par. And if he does, he'll finish on three under. So Hassani, and this would be a fantastic save at the 17th. Downhill, and it will start right. Oh, it's not going to drop, though. He's missed it, did all the hard work, chipping to within five feet or so, but then couldn't sink it. And that restores Zane Scotland's five-shot lead. So Scotland taking no risks, not trying to reach in two. This is his third shot at the last. As he tries to loft this one onto the green. Looks like he's pulled that left though. Takes an awkward bounce. And will nestle in the rough. There's Mohamed Juma Bouamim, firm supporter of golf across the region of course. So Scotland with his fourth shot now. Tremendous recovery and control of the golf ball. And he now knows the title is his. Hassani then, who is guaranteed second place, is to finish with a birdie. Down the hill. But he's misread that one. It's not going to turn. His putter's gone cold. He closes with a one under 72. So Zane Scotland, once called a British Tiger Woods, has a habit of winning season openers on the MENA Tour, having triumphed in Abu Dhabi, and he does the same in Morocco as well. Completes his par, takes the title, and rounds off an imperious display to wrap up victory. So Scotland wins in Morocco, finishing on 10 under. Five shot victory over Yunus Al Hassani, with Stephen Dodd, Greg Snow, and Ian Keenan all tied for third place.
Meanwhile, Emmett Majan finished as the top amateur on one under after a final round of 74. I was hitting the ball well to begin with. My early birdie and the tough holes were probably the first six holes. And uh, yeah, he, he sort of dropped a couple of shots and uh, he had just got that bit of a lead. And then um, your man there, Hassani, he was, he, started, he was playing well, you know, he was throwing birdies at it as well. So I had to, had to sort of keep an eye on, on him. Um, but yeah, I, was, I, I think I got off to a good start against uh, Stephen not having a very good start. And then it you know, gave me a good chance. So for the third time in a row, Zane Scotland triumphs in a season opening event on the MENA Golf Tour. The perfect start to his season and he'll now have his sights set on a place at the 2014 Omega Dubai Desert Classic. That's all we've got time for. Thanks for watching and goodbye.